<laughs> Students, uh, good morning. And today we continue the series of the lectures uh, given, delivered by uh, distinguished speakers. And our uh, today's uh, topic is nuclear energy, the topic which is very controversial, the topic which is very interesting, and the topic that many Lithuanians have certain opinion about. First of all, it's because very controversial story with our a uh, nuclear energy company, Leo Alte, which was scandalously created and even more scandalously dismantled. And then secondly, because we just closed down our nuclear power plant in Ignalina. And third, I think that, well, maybe not the young generation, but our generation still remember the consequences of the disaster in Chernobyl. So, I mean, there are lots of lots of uh, questions, issues in our heads related to the issue of nuclear energy. And well, at the moment, as we all know, Lithuanians also considering of building a new a nuclear power plant. So this is also the hot issue, an issue very relevant to Lithuania. So uh, very timely today, we have a um, very distinguished speaker to, uh, with us, and it's His Excellency Václav Bartuszka, very Lithuanian surname, <laughs> who is a current ambassador at large for energy security in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Czech Republic. And well, to tell a couple of words more about Mr. Bartuszka is that he was a very active student uh, during the uh, Velvet Revolution. He was one of the student leaders during that time of the Velvet Revolution. And he devoted some of the time of his career for the journalism and worked for the Czech Daily newspaper, and uh, which is uh, very interesting uh, in his career that he also worked with the uh, big event organizations such as Czech Participation and Expo 2000, and finally he ended up with the energy uh, in, in energy security issues, and he was appointed as the ambassador at large for energy security. And during the Czech presidency of the EU, he took a very important part in the negotiations during the gas crisis, and. Uh, at the moment, he works for the Minister of Foreign Affairs, but he also teaches, which is important for the students. He teaches for the New York, at the New York University in Prague. And today, uh, the person who has a very big, huge experience in energy uh, security issues uh, will talk uh, to us about the nuclear energy. Labadena, good morning. Uh, I was asked to speak through microphone because acoustics are not that good, so I, I hope you can hear me. If not, please show something. Uh, I've suggested a title for my talk here about nuclear because I also, I also got a second job now. Since June this year, I was, I was appointed by government to be the government commissioner for the nuclear tender for Temelin, which is a nuclear plant in the Czech Republic, and we are now in the tender process for two more blocks. We already have six in the country operating. And uh, the more I know about this stuff, and the more I travel, and the more I see all three bidders, we have three bidders in the tender, the Russian Rosatom, American Japanese Westinghouse, and the French Areva, the more I see the sites in the world, in the US, in Asia, in Europe, and speak with the companies, the more I'm sure that for all the talk about nuclear renaissance, there is no nuclear renaissance yet. There is nuclear resuscitation. There is a waking up of, of, the, of an industry which was basically in a coma in the US for 30 years, in Europe for almost 20 years. Uh, we have the distinction of being the country which finished the last two nuclear power plants open in the European Union in 2000 and 2001, and Tembain 1 and 2. So we still have some nuclear know-how. At the moment, there is just construction of two new blocks, one in Finland at Okiluoto, one in France in Flamanville. And there are several countries in the Europe interested in having 
another nuclear power plant, one of them is Lithuania, with the Visagina slash Ignalina plant. But uh, whenever I'm asked about to speak about the Czech tender, you know, journalists like, like to call it the biggest tender in Europe right now. Well, it's not the biggest, it's simply the only one. And for all the talk about nuclear renaissance, there is one tender running in the Czech Republic, that's it, in all Europe. And there is construction of four blocks in the US, but it's construction only in the, in the phase of the landscaping. And all the rest of the action is in Asia, and partly in Russia. So it's mostly Je Korea, China, Japan, possibly India soon, and Russia. That's it. So what I find most interesting in all this is that mm, we as Europeans, uh, we have all, those, all our political squabbles. I'm happy to see ambassadors from countries which are anti-nuclear or don't like nuclear. We're in this funny position of uh, having something and using something that we publicly don't like to admit we actually, we actually have or own. Uh, the Czech Republic was the initiator and I was one of, one of the people who initiated the nuclear forum in, in European Union, which is, which is running since 2007. And I was asked by journalists in 2007, what do I think about the European Nuclear Energy Forum? I said, it's like meeting of, pe meeting of people who smoke marijuana and want to legalize it. You know, one third of electricity in the European Union, about 30%, is from nuclear. U nuclear is being used by 14 out of 27 countries. Yet it's something we don't dare to admit. It's, we all pretend that we don't smoke. You know, you know, maybe, maybe somebody else uses pot, but not us. So that's a really interesting situation, given how big the industry is, how important it is for our countries and for our economies in the whole EU. And that's because we have all variety of opinions. We have four countries which are strongly anti-nuclear. We have countries which are strongly pro-nuclear. We have countries which have nuclear power plants and don't want to have any more. We have countries which don't have nuclear power plants but want to have some. You know, we have the whole array of opinions in Europe. Uh, for me, the interesting thing is that we all talk about political opinions and what public is willing to swallow. We tend to ignore the technical side. The simple fact that much of the ability to build something disappeared from Europe. And uh, I'm not trying to be, to be too dark about it, but uh, it amazes me how, how ignorant we Europeans sometimes are about the disappearance of technical skills from this continent. Now, almost everything we buy is made, of China, made in China. And I really want to know how we will pay for it 20 years from now. What will be the high level skills we will keep in our continent? Besides tourism and beer and the basic stuff we have. What will be the high tech industries which we will keep? And probably nuclear is one of the few areas in which Europe can be competitive if it remains clever. At the moment, I think we are still having some edge in industry itself, in research and development. It's one of the few areas. You know, I think 20 years from now, we'll probably not see most of the basic stuff being made in Europe. We already import huge amounts of daily products from faraway, faraway places. So nuclear can be one of those. But at the moment, I see a very interesting situation. I was at the Ignalina yesterday. I, I, I'm meeting your public officials in Lithuania. And it's very interesting to see the discussion here about nuclear, which copies basically the situation in Britain, in Italy, and elsewhere, which is mostly about politics and about, if at all, it's about money. And uh, only when you actually finish those two hurdles, politics and money, you start to look at the difficulties of building a nuclear power plant, actually, of doing the hard work, which I think is the biggest obstacle of, of all. And I'm, I'm really amazed by how much of the knowledge disappeared from Europe and how much of it is gone. So maybe I will just try to provoke you a little bit, but I would love to have your questions, if, if I may because I, I already know what I want to say, but I would like to know what you are interested in, if you are at least interested in something. So just a small provocation. Uh, I am, let's say, like most of the Czech establishment, uh, 
we are not pro-nuclear as per se, but we just see that nuclear is one of the few options how to keep our economy going, because the energy needs of Europe are far greater than we love to admit. We have a beautiful lifestyle in Europe, luxurious lifestyle. One of the smooth things, there's a beautiful sunshine out there, but we still have the lights on in this room. Now that's something that we stopped paying attention to a long time ago, because we are so accustomed to having all the energy we need. But if you travel to Dhaka or Nairobi or even many Brazilian places, you will understand that energy can be in great shortage, shortage and that there are, there are places in the world which have simply no electricity at all or not, not much of that most of the time. So the lifestyle we have is beautiful, it's pretty costly, and it was built on cheap energy. And that cheap energy will be gone, or is mostly gone. One, of the, one simple reason is that uh, 20 years ago, all the resources of this, of this planet were, were at the disposal of the, the rich world. The West and the East, as well. I mean, the unlucky part of Europe, which was in the East. 20 years on, today, you have three more billion people who want to have the same lifestyle. In China, in India, in Brazil, in Vietnam, and elsewhere. And there is no way in hell you can persuade them not to, not to want what we have. And if you go to China regularly and you see the amount of cars increasing on the streets and the, the amount of bicycles disappearing, you will understand what, I'm, what I say. There, there's, it's clear that uh, we, the West, have a very patchy record of exporting democracy and human rights. But we are excellent exporters of consumerism, measuring the lifestyle with the things you can buy and burn and use. So we, we need plenty of energy. We will need even more. We will probably not have enough fossil fuels for several reasons. One is that we, we try to, not, not yet ban, but we, actually, we try to penalize use of the CO2 related fossil fuels. Plenty of the fossil fuels are, are far away, far away from, from Europe and will be unavailable, unavailable, to, un, unavailable to us pretty soon. I mean, oil and gas. You know, in Lithuania, all the questions I got here were about Russia. And that's funny. In this part of Europe, Russia is the, is the bugbear. But if you go to London or Paris or elsewhere, the discussion is different. Discussion is different. The, the, the problem we have as Europe is that 90% of oil and gas is in the hands of nation states. And most of those countries have no reason to like the West, let alone help it. And if you look at the list of the countries which have oil and gas, those 90% of the world's supply, Russia is actually among the countries which are more friendly to Europe than others, and closer. And if you consider Russia alien, go to Saudi Arabia. You understand what I say. So the real difficulty of Europe is that we are huge energy consuming, even though we love, we love to claim that we are energy efficient. Well, yes, yes, we have. Yes, we are efficient, but we are hugely energy demanding, and we are accustomed to a beautiful lifestyle. Most likely, we will not have enough fossil fuels to cover that need. Most likely, the renewables will be available only in some parts of Europe, and probably not in the amounts which we need. So we will need some sort of base load source of energy. That can be coal or nuclear. And both, all these options are not really nice. I think that the opposition in Europe is now towards building anything new. I don't know about your country, but in my country we have opposition to nuclear, we have opposition to gas-fired power stations, to, to go-fired power stations, we have opposition to solar plants, we have opposition to wind farms. I mean, there is now a beautiful saying in Britain that they moved from NIMBY to banana. NIMBY was not in my backyard. And banana means build absolutely nothing anywhere near anyone. And I think that's really Europe today. Any project you want to build, somebody will be against it. You can be absolutely sure. So what you will choose or what other EU countries will choose, I don't know. It will, it will, it will be greatly different from country to country. In the case of Czech Republic, we chose to have at least half of our energy cons electricity, electricity production in nuclear. We have, we have about 34% at the moment. So we, want, we have six operating reactors. We, have, we want to have at least two more. And uh, being the only ones who are now in tender process in Europe, 